Thank you for tuning in here to Power and Glory broadcast with Apostle John King Hill. For those of you who have the great appetite to venture into the dimensions of the realms of God, I want to take some time here and talk with you about some amazing revelation of the glory of the Lord God that will propel your life in a very unusual way. But before I go further to take us into the broadcast, I want to take this time to welcome our beloved brother Roy Field to come and lead us into a moment of worship. And I'll be right back with us immediately after this. Raise me, 
raise me up to more than I can be. I am back, people. Uh, today, I want to go back to where we left off on our last broadcast. I'm praying here that the Lord will allow me to finish this broadcast. Because I'm beginning to experience a surge of his presence around here sometimes it interferes with what i have to do so I, you may see me trying to hurry up as his great presence comes it's like i have to hurry up quickly to see if i can get a few words out before everything gets shut down so i want you to be with me if I begin to cry here, it happens quite often. I want to take us through a journey that I titled Experiencing Deeper Walk with God. This will be the part two that I promised us. And so I'm going to go back to the same scripture that we looked into last time which is genesis chapter 5 verse 21 through verse 24 and enoch lived 60 and five years and begat methuselah and enoch walked with god after he begat methuselah for 300 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. I'm seeing certain things that were transpiring in that unusual experience with the living God. Walking with God is an indication of maintaining a close proximity or contact. And another part that we have to look at is the duration of the work besides the impact that such closeness had upon the life of Enoch. We have to look into these whole areas. As he remained close or maintained the distance in his work with God, he suddenly experienced the dynamics of spiritual a shift to transition into the deeper realms of immortality. I am trying to hold myself so I don't cry here. There are those in the realms of God that have lost the history of their lives and they are totally different classes and they also assume different status in God please pay attention to what I'm going to be saying here these are deeper things of God beyond the things that eyes have seen ears have heard or have entered into the human faculties. Infinity is the realm where you cannot find the history 
or records of any created works. Hmm. To venture into this dimension, you have gone through so much transformation that you have consummated multiplicity of eternity. The revelation of the beginning and the end and the resurrection and the life and because as he is so are you there is no way to know who you really are your identity can no longer be determined so your life history cannot be traced or verified another thing about immortality is that you become ageless there is no way to gather any intelligence about your previous life or uncover your destination or origin forever this is the secret of those who have lost themselves into him and they have been established permanently in these realms so they have become part of the mysteries of the glory and the wonders of living and moving and having their being in him image after his likeness is vesting upon the spiritual man the ability to know the mysteries of life because you know by revelations even as you are known by revelations nothing here is superficial i want to take you through another scripture here genesis chapter 2 verse 19 through verse 24 and show you a picture of how adam functioned in that dimension as the only man that consummated the fullness of the image after the likeness of god in this life and out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field believe it or not adam is going to read this whole entire thing from spiritual revelation beyond academic and out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever adam called every living creature that was the name thereof <laughs> and adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was not found and help meet for him and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his rib and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought him unto the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh this is spiritual diagnosis beyond anything that you can learn in any classroom setting this is what we call a divine revelation he was looking into the spiritual realms 
in his deep sleep as he tunneled through the dimensions of the glory he was vacuuming every spiritual intelligence on the created works and the wife that he has never met before this is incredible people if you could check into all the school yearbooks since the constitution of academic systems were adopted among men you would discover that adam's pictorial images are not included in all of them or any of them no school will get up and say they saw adam in their classroom he was among the categories of the libraries of created works that shared a perfect mirror image of the creator and had the divine articulation of the hidden mysteries of life after the fall you see the human race try to make sense of what life really is where do i come from what am i in this place to do what is happening what does this thing mean the academic is a big deal for the falling man because he has to feed off of artificial intelligence adam did not know life through the lenses of academic exploration learning processes through scientific researches and experimentation by entering into the depth of life and experiencing the greatness of the power of the living god this is what the creator has for us that's why he designed us the way he designed us but the fall since his days of immortality to mortality no replacement or substitute has been found to take and occupy his place therefore his creator had to wear his uniform coat to bring back the physical orders of life into divine alignments he was the only mortal that consummated eternal order without the processes of additional calibration or adjustments let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion the glory is a dimension of eternal distinctions and the place where people cannot copy or mimic each other. The immortals are not born. Hmm. They are created so we see a life that show extraordinary acceleration by passing or overcoming many laws of growth and maturation as is what you are dealing with in these dimensions of the glory of the living god there are no professors or tutors among the created works that can testify under oath that they taught adam in any curriculum please people please i want you to see that the peak of spiritual maturation is maximizing the fullness of growth because you simply defy all the gravity enforced by different learning structures people do not often understand why the glory takes conquering spiritual orbital positioning it is not just studying yourself to success <laughs> 
So let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is a set up that is beyond personal ingenuity or having a genius mindset. Divine establishment is not earned through academic resumes, academic achievements, or personal qualifications. <laughs> My God. The reason is that the making process is what defines the moment above other individual orientation. Self-acquired abilities does not take the place of divine assessment. So the weights of our values often depreciate or deprecate as we come into spiritual depths. A man that has 1,000 PhDs can enter the spirit realm and when everything is looked into he's only a baby that don't know A, B, C, D, E, F. Life is tailor-made to suit the creator's visions which is why the people perish where there is no vision. We must see the creator as a spiritual ophthalmologist. And the light nature is the way he perfects the visions of life. An ophthalmologist is an eye doctor who diagnoses eye conditions and they can treat them surgically if needed. So I'm talking about spiritual x-ray or scan to diagnose the trajectory of life when a sudden detours or obscurity begins to engulf the parts of our purposes and destinies. The making process is entering into a fitting room or laboratory where life is formed, made, framed, or created and tested for conformity and compatibility before releasing the functionalities of life into motions. So there are important checklists that must be verified a marked as good meaning to be perfect because life cannot function fully in off mode you need everything to experience whole maturation to handle extreme performances <laughs> my god I use the words conformity and compatibility to indicate the necessity for spiritual and physical compliances. This is the key to completion. The investigation must lead to the final approval before establishment, the Bible said, and the God saw that it was good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 12. Earlier in our part 1 of this broadcast, experiencing a deeper walk with God, I made mention of the shadow of death. But I want to share an experience I had some time ago. The shadow of death 
in a simple term is seeing a glimpse of the triumphant victory over death but without the power of creation and the power of resurrection you cannot celebrate the real triumph over death so walking with god is an experiential event is not a simulation alone is not studying the scriptures alone is breaking the barriers to come into closeness with him and uh, the things that are going to happen by sharing that closeness will determine your real christian experience in him if it did not happen that way you will run from death and hide the way from the powerful sting nobody wants to die you know I was allowed by the Lord to experience the shadow of death. One morning I was summoned into the spiritual realm and I was brought to a valley. I did not know what was about to take place. But as I looked there were thousands of coffins or caskets made with a fine quality gold they were so decorated and they're extremely beautiful there were a great number of people everywhere suddenly the voice of the lord god spoke out of the heavenly and commanded us to choose our coffins and offer our lives to die i watched as people fled <laughs> in a hurry from all directions because of the fear of death they were not willing to die i raised up my right hand and pointed to one of the coffins and said this is mine and the experience ended and i came out of it this is how i came to realization that the shadow of death is where mortals voluntarily accept to die or confront the power of death without fearing the sting it is called the valley of the shadow of death because it is a landmark we are real death experiences are simulated to win people from the power and the fear of death it's like setting an obstacle course before you to challenge you so that you will be able to pass your test the valley of the shadow of death is a historical valley historical valley is the ultimate testing place before ascension into the realms of glory because the valley is showing you that after the valley you have to experience elevation as ascension people many people will hide themselves or simply turn away when they are taken into this place of death like Golgotha when Jesus Christ was arrested to be crucified at Golgotha everyone including the disciples hid or fled to avoid being captured and put to death with him in case you do not know this is the valley of the shadow of a death experiences unless you carry your cross and follow him you will not transition to the other side of life resurrection does not happen without death that's why it's called resurrection meaning that you are coming from death unto life
carrying your cross is picking your own coffin for your burial or choosing to die so you can experience the power of creation the power of resurrection the power of ascension and the power of revelation they all go together one will trigger the other event because the spiritual events are sensational they are set in motions to come one after the other and the reason is because there are no seasons and times so you are experiencing roll over momentums the power of creation or the creative power of god is what puts the pieces of our lives back together like a reconstructive surgery or similar to ezekiel's valley of the dry bones the shadow is a spiritual fingerprint because it is preserving the silhouette or taking a picture of an image of a person a thing before his or her records of existence are consumed or disappears permanently again i'm trying to hold myself to finish showing you these things these things come with great power of god as far as i'm talking the power of god is surging non-stop sometimes i have to stutter my mouth will freeze both that and glory dismantle or strip everything down until charred bones and even until there are no traces of existence hmm. under the shadow of the almighty is a place where all shadows are turned backwards or cropped out so that no creation can preserve a duplicate copy or retain any picture as identifying image or object when you move into the deeper realms of the dimensions of the glory of god and you become like him your behavior your characteristics will also become like him your functionalities will also become like him the brightness of his glory will delete your image will take away your shadow so that no created work will be able to take your pictures in the spirit dimensions <laughs> this is how the glory conceals the elements and the beings in those dimensions and realms of life they are also hidden like god you know the bible said that he dwells in the secret place okay immaterialization that's a big word right here but the word immaterialization is destroying all templates and hiding all records and the images of a heavenly artworks of his creations a temporal life offers temporal memories eternal life offers eternal memories and infinity offers infinite memories therefore the memories of the created works can be wiped out from all history of life the brightness of his glory 
erases all recordings or archives and alters all the history of life and existence, genealogical and biological traces. Because we are like him, old things pass away, meaning that the memories, the history, and the records of all the images, shapes, patterns, appearances, looks, behavior, characteristics, national origins, tongues or languages, and all marks are gone. Amazing. Amazing things. The glory dimensions walk like white out. The deeper you experience is the more your whole being is transformed in him. It is coming to the place of his nature. Remember that the glory conceals Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2a their glory consumes Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 and the glory overshadows Luke chapter 1 verse 35 this is to hide all things in him so you need access to spiritual intelligence. The Bible says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29a. Always in the deeper dimensions of the glory, the past, present, and the future are unified as one to hide all things forever. And by concealing the signatures of seasons and times, seconds, minutes, hours, or days, weeks, months, years, and ages, as well as the summer, winter, fall and spring there is no way to determine when anything really happened regardless of the realms of life hmm. my god there are men who continues to move in the deeper dimensions of the glory forever and their lives are a strange as it gets. They have revelations that the history of life from before and the after the creation, including the loss of many civilizations, cannot account for. As they continuously worship and serve the living God, they continue to experience beyond everything that has been created, past, present, and future. This is part of knowing the heart of the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Intelligence oversight is a spiritual privilege, people in the realms of glory because the father wants the sons to see and hear what he is saying and what he is doing in the kingdom these include the mysteries of his created works that's why they are taken into the libraries, into the different archive, to look into the things that they have not seen in these earth realms, things that they have never ever come into contact with in this life or any other place. They are given access and the accessibility into these hidden mysteries. 
in this world the governments use the term classified intelligence briefing so finally here because of the power of creation the sons are no longer just created works they also create with the father i i hope you are getting this thing this is a lot this is too heavy but take your time and listen to it over and over and over and pray as the father is the life he has also given life to the sons to create or give life john chapter 5 from verse 19 through verse 21 they rule with him and declare his judgment over the creations that's how they judge angels and so forth when the lord god spoke to job the interrogation we are centered on extracting deeper intelligence that only deeper revelation can yield because it was the revelation of his judgment the lord god had to cross examine job as part of the court protocols until job testified that he had no clue the judge of all could not rest the case job you know, thought like like he knew so much Uh, Job had spoken things that he did not know and there are no ways he could get any help because the depth of God is beyond reverse psychology <laughs> it is why he reveals these things to you when you begin to interact with him in the deeper dimensions so that you know what in the world you are doing there is a depth of god we are the smart guys are not even smart at all the bible said that then job answered the lord and said behold i am vile what shall i answer thee i will lay my hand upon my mouth i'll close my mouth once have i spoken but i will not answer yea twice but i will proceed no further Job chapter 40 from verse 3 through verse 5 Job chapter 42 from verse 1 through verse 6 said then Job answered the Lord and said I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge therefore have I uttered that i understood not thanks to too wonderful for me which i knew not to hear i beseech thee and i will speak i will demand of thee and declare thou unto me i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear as different but now my eye seeth thee wherefore i abhor myself and repent in dust and the ashes you must know how the heavens operate to function in the dimensions of the realms of heaven it's not a copy and a paste that's why you pay the price the bible said for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen it does nothing changes hands here There are deeper depths in God where nothing changes hand by mistake so you must wait for your eternal establishment Another thing is that revelation is a part of the age of innocence Therefore the Lord God must establish his rulership over your life or you will fail rulership means to live according to divine orders alone you simply take orders and follow 
the others, period. And the last verse of the Bible that I will give you here before I go is Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 through verse 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. This is why I say that you live only by order and rulership, period. You have to understand that his perfect will is the perfection of his life almighty and all powerful he as a person can live the fullness of his life and exercise the fullness of his authority and the greater power and i'm talking about almighty and all powerful without subjection to corruption and judgment both life authority and power are subject to judgment the way you live, the way you do things, the way you exercise the authority that is given to you, the way that you use the power that is given to you, this is why the Holy Spirit helps you. He is here to help you. He leads you so that you know what, how to work with the anointing when it comes. And he controls your life in the spiritual dimension so that you don't embark or walk against his perfect will. You get thrown out of heaven. Like Lucifer. I hope your life has been revolutionized through this broadcast here. I had wanted to address this part with us. We're going to keep moving forward, exploring different areas, different depths. Over the years, I have spent enormous time writing these deeper things of God. As the Lord take me back and forth into the realms of heaven. Like John the Revelator, whom I have met once. I will come back to write these things. That's where these books came from. I, we offer these books as a bundle. This is three of them. This is Mysteries of the Supernatural. This is purpose and destiny. And this is image after his likeness. I'm going to make available uh, the video uh, commercial for these three books that we are offering to save you money so that you will be able to get this tree in a bundle form. So there's also other books that we have written here that deal with the glory of God depths that you may have never ever thought about. And I will also make available how you can support us. We are here to build a location in Texas here. If the Lord is leading you to uh, contact us, to help us to build, to support our building effort, don't hesitate to do it. Watch what we are doing investigate what we are doing investigate who we are so that you know who you are following so that you know what you are doing because we are not here to take you on the wrong side we want to show you the depths of the glory of god because that's where your life is going to be fitted into in the end times and you don't want to miss the occasion and i hope to be back with us here another time as we venture even deeper and deeper into the endless dimensions of the realms of the glory until next time, God bless you.